Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Access Copyright v. York. In April 2020, the Federal Court of Appeal released a decision on the York v. Access Copyright case, a case that was already over a decade in the making. The outcome of this case continues to be very important to educational institutions and copyright collectives alike. The main issues revolve around whether tariffs approved by the Copyright Board are mandatory and whether the copyright fair dealing guidelines used by York were fair. Authors and copyright owners can choose to have licenses to their works managed by collective licensing agencies, or collectives, like Access Copyright. Access Copyright manages the copying of the works in its repertoire. Educational institutions can choose to enter into agreements with collectives like Access Copyright in order to cover routine copying of those works in the institutions, according to formulas agreed on by both parties. When disagreements arise around the terms and conditions of a licensing agreement, the collective can apply to the Copyright Board to address the situation with a tariff. And if that doesn't work, well, you sue the other party. And in this case, spoiler alert, it didn't work. At the core of the issue is differing views of how, when, and for whom the tariff, or interim tariff, is binding. In March of 2010, Access Copyright proposed a new tariff for its client universities and colleges with the Copyright Board. If approved, Access Copyright would be allowed to include this rate in their license agreements. The new tariff was a considerable increase over the previous agreements. They wanted to move from an agreement where institutions paid a $3.38 fee per full-time enrolled student, with additional fees per page copied, to a proposed $45 per full-time student for universities, or $35 per full-time student for colleges, without the additional fee per page copied. For universities like York, this would mean a significant increase in fees. Beyond the massive increase in fees, the proposed tariff created other concerns for colleges and universities. Particularly, this tariff intended to expand into the area of digital licensing, meaning that if you scan, print, store, display, or send a link to a work, this would be considered making a copy. Additionally, the new tariff contained numerous audit, reporting, and monitoring provisions that would place new burdens on the institutions, their staff, and instructors. When license renewal negotiations over these new terms between York University and Access Copyright started to languish, Access Copyright applied to the Copyright Board for, and was granted, an interim tariff. York briefly complied with the terms of the interim tariff, but then, as many educational institutions did, they opted out. The educational institutions that opted out had determined that their copying could be managed through a combination of other strategies, like using site licenses from content vendors, open access materials, open educational resources, relying on fair dealing exceptions, and using transactional licenses. They therefore did not need to enter into an institutional license agreement with Access Copyright because they could manage their copyright compliance in other ways. The 2012 decisions of several Supreme Court cases around fair dealing, including SOCAN v. Bell and Alberta Education v. Access Copyright, helped to clarify the fair dealing exceptions in the Act that universities were often relying on. In 2012, education was also officially added as a purpose under fair dealing. This made the royalty rates proposed in the Access Copyright License Agreement since 2010 even less appealing to educational institutions, who now felt more confident that they could rely on fair dealing exceptions to cover their copying of portions of works in certain situations. Which brings us to the case in question. Hopes that Access Copyright might be more cooperative with educational institutions following the decisions in 2012 were dashed when the collective filed a lawsuit against York in 2013. Access Copyright sued York to enforce the terms of its interim tariff, essentially contending that the interim tariff had a mandatory effect on York, and that York could not opt out, and that if York made an infringing copy, they would be responsible for the full amount of royalty payments outlined in the tariff. York countered with a request that the court declare any copying it made under fair dealing guidelines to be fair dealing and thus non-infringing. Therefore, York argued, even if a tariff was mandatory, they had not infringed copyright. Therefore, the two main questions in this case are, is the interim tariff that was issued by the Copyright Board mandatory, even for institutions who are not under a license with the collective? 
and can all copying done by York under the terms of its guidelines be considered fair dealing? The federal court decision in this case was reached in 2017, when the Federal Court of Canada delivered a complete victory in favor of access copyright. The court rejected York University's approach to fair dealing and concluded that the interim tariff was in fact mandatory and enforceable against the university. Let's break down the arguments in this first case and how the federal court came to this decision. Starting with the fair dealing assessment. The judge in this case, Justice Michael Phelan, found that the fair dealing guidelines outlined by York did not pass the six-factor test for assessing whether a dealing is fair. It should be noted that the application of the six-factor test by the judge in this case has been criticized for contradicting past jurisprudence around applying the six factors. When assessing the purpose of the dealing, Justice Phelan determined that there are two users to consider, the university and the students. This interpretation ignored the determination of past Supreme Court cases, that the only relevant perspective when considering whether the dealing is for an allowable purpose is that of the end user, the students. While the alternatives to the dealing factor was ruled to be more fair in favor of York, Justice Phelan leaned heavily on the effect of the dealing factor in making his final ruling. He agreed with the argument made by Access Copyright that the court should consider all actual and financial impacts of the copying. In the past fair dealing cases, the Supreme Court had not considered likely impacts of copying that could not be substantiated with evidence. For these reasons, Justice Phelan sided with Access Copyright. As mentioned previously, the judge in this case sided with the collective on the other issue as well, determining that the tariff should indeed be mandatory for York to pay. Both Access Copyright and the judge interpreted tariff as a fee that is imposed for a service and that automatically applies to anyone who does an action that falls under the agreement, whether they have agreed to that license or not. The court also noted that the Copyright Act does not define the word tariff, and so it relied on other common definitions of the word. In responding to this decision, Professor Ariel Katz pointed out that the court failed to notice that while the act does not define the word tariff, it clearly defines the nature of the particular tariffs relevant in this case. Katz argued that the proposed tariff sets out the terms and conditions under which access copyright is able to issue licenses, but that these terms do not automatically apply to non-licensees. Because of criticism like this, there was substantial pushback following the ruling made by the federal court, and it was no surprise that York appealed this decision on both grounds, the fairness of its guidelines and whether tariffs are mandatory. The federal court of appeal reached its decision in the appeal of this case in April 2020. On the mandatory tariff issue, the court overturned the decision of the court in 2017 and found that tariffs are not mandatory. The court determined that an individual cannot acquire a license without the consent of the copyright owner, and a copyright owner cannot impose financial or other terms on a person who has not agreed to become a licensee. Instead, if copyright is infringed, the copyright owner can choose to make an action for legal damages against those who are infringing on their rights. The court went on to say that there is no grant of power to the board to make or establish tariffs by regulation. This decision was a welcome result for the post-secondary community, as it allows institutions the freedom to choose from a range of possible approaches and licensing options to remain copyright compliant. In terms of the fair dealing aspect of the case, the Federal Court of Appeal found that York did not show that the federal court erred in law in its understanding of the relevant factors. Thus, the claim by York that the court in the first decision had misinterpreted fair dealing was dismissed. The court also pointed out that as the copier, it was incumbent on York to make sure that its guidelines were implemented according to their stated intention. But the federal court had found that safeguards were virtually absent and that this undermined York's claim to fair dealing and tended to show unfairness in their copying. The court also noted that York's guidelines did not attempt to forestall downstream copying and redistribution by students. These statements by the court will likely shape the way that educational institutions develop and communicate their fair dealing policies in the future. Some have pointed out that the court's examination of the fair dealing issue did not include a thorough historical reflection in the way that it had when it reviewed the mandatory tariff issue. The 2019 Indu Statutory Review of the Copyright Act acknowledged the ongoing tension between copyright collectives and educational institutions and suggested that in the future, perhaps the government could help parties resolve their differences. As of June 2020, both Access Copyright and York have applied for leave to appeal with the Supreme Court. The legal saga just keeps going and going, 
Not unlike this module, am I right? Who will ultimately emerge victorious in the Access v. York debate? Well, I, I guess we'll just have to make another module. You should now be able to. Understand the debate around mandatory tariffs in this case, and how this was interpreted by the courts. Describe how the fairness of York's fair dealing guidelines were assessed in this case, and recognize the implications of this decision for educational institutions and collective licensing agencies. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Access v. York. Thank you for your attention.